Hey everybody, Ryan Graydon from Hidden Acres here, and I know it's been a while since uh, uh, I've talked to you through video, um, but I just wanted to give you a, a kind of a follow-up report uh, what's all happened here in the last few months since I've last talked to you guys. Um, first off, we had an incredible summer, and I know uh, leading up to our summer camp and summer camp program, well, you know, COVID hit. And uh, it turned our world and, and even our, our camp upside down. And as most of you know and maybe remember from some of our videos, there was just a lot of confusion, a lot of questions that we couldn't answer, a lot of uh, questions that we didn't know if we would get answered. And um, um, as a staff, we, we, we even uh, just internally turmoiled over things. Some people um, wanted to push forward, some were a little bit reserved. Um, but I was so excited and so thankful to be a part of a staff that came together as a ministry and said, look, Hidden Acres is more than just us. Um, God has a purpose and a plan for this ministry. And if we can push forward and make it happen uh, and get it going, we're going to do it. And you guys, that's what we did. And I have no doubt there were tons of people praying for us and for what God was doing during the summer. And I want to thank you for that uh, because it was certainly felt and seen. Um, but but I'm, I'm happy to report that we went through six weeks of summer camp with some strict policies and procedures and had no cases of COVID-19 here at the camp. Maybe that's a miracle. Maybe that's chance. I believe God had his hand on that. And, and with a healthy fear, uh, we followed. And so I want to come to you today and just talk a little bit about that because fear is something that has been on my mind a lot over the last few months, especially since COVID came in. What's, what's right? And I, and I think... Uh, ministries, churches, camps, businesses, homes, families. This pandemic brought on a fear that we have never experienced before. You know, the last pandemic was 100 years ago, and, and the generations that dealt with that are gone. And even though we have information from that, it's just all different. And so how to deal with this um, has been a learning curve for everybody in our, our country. But I've really been, been wrestling with what's the right fear to have when something like this comes on? What, what does God expect of us as Christians when there's legitimately something that's scary, you know? What I've seen over the last few months um, has not completely answered my questions and, and even pouring through Scripture I know I'm supposed to be fearful. I know I'm supposed to have a healthy fear. I know I'm supposed to not fear. So where's all, where does it all balance out? Going into this summer, I think we as a staff had a healthy fear of the pandemic. We knew through different health organizations, different suggestions from the state and federal government, that if we did these things, it would reduce our risk. And a lot of that was tough to do because it sometimes meant turning people away. It sometimes meant extra effort on our part. Um, but what, what we came around to is there's a bigger purpose here that we, we need to see. And if it means a lot of extra effort on our point, it's worth it. If it means we have to do things a little differently, it's worth it. Because what we desire most is that the gospel is evident and present in everything that we do. And that God's gospel isn't hindered by a pandemic. That, that the message that Jesus died for you and me is more important than fearing this illness. With that said, though, we also had a healthy fear of the illness. We didn't just 
open up the floodgates and said, whatever happens, happens. You know, we had some policies and procedures in, in place to make sure that those who were coming in, to, to the best of our ability and their ability, they were healthy enough to be here. And if something happened while they were here, we had policies and procedures to, to quickly take care of the situation and, and try to protect others around. And I'm thankful to report that they worked. But that doesn't bring things back to normal. And so I'm coming to you today because I, I, I want to challenge your mind and your heart. I want to challenge what you believe. You know, I think in the scriptures we see Jesus calculated visits, you know. He didn't go everywhere. Some places you could look at and see they were dangerous, so he didn't go. Some places were dangerous and he did go, you know. So I think from Scripture we can learn that that you can't just say whatever happens, happens. You have to understand the risk. You have to make the best decision. And, and for us here at camp and our leadership, um, that decision was prayerfully considered and thought out. Every step, prayerfully considered and thought out. And we really searched for a peace in whatever decision was made. So when it comes to camp and retreats and the future ministries that, that might happen out here, my challenge to you is this, what's the right fear to have? For you as a guest who might just attend one of our men's retreats or women's retreats or family camps, you know, some of you out there are going, I can't go, it's too dangerous. And we get that. We understand. And for you, it might be. You might have special health conditions that does increase your risk. You might, um, you might just not feel safe. And, and we get that. We really understand that. But is it right for us to fear so much that we begin to lose trust in other people? We begin to lose trust in socializing. We begin to hole up and be alone because I, I think that I think then there's a spiritual battle that's that's warring and Satan's winning. He wants to isolate you. So when it comes to retreats, what does that look like? Well please know this on our side, camp is doing everything possible to make this place a safe place to come. Our housekeeping staff is sanitizing multiple times a day, touch points, doorknobs, bathrooms, um, uh, you know, tabletops, hallways, kitchens, everything that needs to be sterilized on a regular basis is being sterilized. Camp also does a different way of serving. When you come to camp, we have the same great food, but now we do it a different way so that not every person is touching a handle and serving food and then the next person is touching that. Our, our serving staff, our, our food service staff is plating plates and setting them down on a table. You've got the same good food. You will always be full, but then it's just our staff who is wearing masks and gloves and sterilized touching a plate for you to pick up. When we're in social situations that we can't always guarantee social distancing, we ask that you wear a mask. It's not a mandatory mask, but we ask that you wear a mask because it is something that could be safe. And that's really for the few moments that you're in the dining hall before you sit down at a table to eat. You know, when you might be coming in a doorway to the chapel before you spread out and sit in a chair. You know, it's not that you're wearing a mask 24 hours a day. And we at Camp 2 are, are being wise with those who come. We're asking them to fill out health um, forms before they come, even doing a multiple day quarantine and temperature check before they arrive. Um, we'll even do with some groups, uh, we will do temperature checks here just to make sure that everybody's healthy. And so I want you to know that as a ministry of Hidden Acres, here at Hidden Acres, we are doing what we can to make this a safe environment to you, for you to attend. Because we want you here. You know, our executive director, Steve, says quite often, it's not that God speaks louder at a camp, it's just we finally listen. 
And right now we want people here because God is still speaking. And we know that if you're here, you just might hear Him. And so the challenge again to you guys is this, is what's the right fear to have? Some of you are ministries or ministry leaders or church leaders or youth group leaders and, and, and maybe you've had retreats with us in the past and maybe you've canceled or maybe you've got a question mark on what's, what's best. I'll tell you what, we've, come, we've become and had to become somewhat, um, I think experts is a high word, but we have dealt a lot with this pandemic and hosting retreats and thankfully you guys, we have had successful retreats even following our summer camp program. And so I would challenge you guys as leaders who might consider a retreat out here to maybe think through your situation. Is the extra work and effort worth it? To get people away from the grind, to get them out here where it's quiet and peaceful for you can have um, a ministry that might change hearts and lives and families and who knows what. I think it's worth the effort. And you guys, we would love to work along with you. If you say, I don't even know where to begin, you can call us and call our staff and say, okay, here's where you begin. Here's your part of creating a safe retreat here at camp. We still have a full lineup of all of our retreats. You know, our women's retreat is coming up um, this, this uh, fall, and we want you guys here. Uh, again, we promise we are going to do everything on our end to keep it safe. It really is your job and, and whoever would attend to do their job to keep it safe, you know. Men's retreat, sportsmen's retreat, all that is in play, and it's, it's in the lineup um, because we know what to do to make a safe retreat. This summer, it was incredible. Our, our summer camp went incredibly well. We had, uh, I'm just reading from a paper here, we had 155 kids give their life to Christ. 155 decisions for salvation. 142 kids rededicated their lives to Christ. I wonder would that have happened had we said it's just too much work or it's too, we're too scared or we're fearful, you know? I don't think it would have. We had a hundred and, and uh, excuse me, 174 staff hired for the summer. And out of that, we still had, I gotta read this, 157 to 10, 150 high school and college students who were willing to kind of enter into that state of healthy fear and say, hey, look, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can do my part to keep myself safe. I know camp's going to do their part, and I'm going to minister. And they did. It was incredible, you guys. I'll share a quick story. My wife and I, uh, you know, have been part of this planning for summer camp in the spring, and, and you guys, it was, it was, I'll be honest, it was frustrating. Because I shared with you before, we didn't have all the answers, we didn't have all the information, and, and even experts were still figuring things out about this pandemic. And I remember we as a staff were going, geez, what, what, what are we doing here? Is, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it a healthy fear? Is it a wrong fear? What are we doing? And finally we pushed forward and the first camp week began. And I have a garden in our yard, and, and that's kind of my evening escape. I like to go into the garden and just relax and weed and take care of the things and, and my wife was working there with me and I remember the first full day, the evening of the first full day of camp, I hear her crying. And I looked over and I said, what? why are you crying? And she said, I'm hearing the voices of these kids at camp. And I didn't want camp to happen. And she said, I feel so guilty. She said, it was right that we had camp. I remember just, honey, you know, just hugging her and she sobbed on my shoulder. But she was being honest. We have fears. And we still, at this point, we don't have all the answers to this pandemic. And, and still at this point, there's no foreseeable cure. And really no place is is 100% predicted. 
But she realized, and like we did through the summer, God's pretty big. And we need to trust that He is doing something bigger than us. And even though we're fearful, it's right to follow. And so this, again, this message is a challenge to you. What's your fear look like? We here at Hidden Acres would love, would love to have you guys come and visit, come and have retreats, come and experience the grounds and, and what God has done here. We would love for His message to be shared and told and taught within your groups or within our retreats. But this year, that's going to take understanding our fears. And I think it's right to have a healthy fear. And maybe that's what God is teaching us through all that. What does a healthy fear look like? And so again, if, uh, if you're considering coming to our retreats, I'm going to encourage you, please come. If you're healthy, please come. If, if you're a leader who has had retreats here in the past, I'm encouraging you, please come. Call us and say, what do I need to do on our side to make sure that we're safe to come? And we will coach you through that. Because we would love to see these beds in our facilities filled again. And you guys, this is not a business thing. Thankfully, God is taking care of us. It's a ministry thing. I believe God's going to use this pandemic to minister to people, but it takes us who have the opportunity to minister to kind of corral our fears and do the right thing. So again, we are, we are so encouraged by what God has done here so far, and we know that God is going to continue to work through this, uh, especially here at Hidden Acres and other ministries that, that love and support us. Uh, and, and again, if you have questions, concerns, um, please let us know. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to see you here soon. Um, if you want to contact me or Steve, personally, our, our emails are on the web um, site. But again, we love you guys. We want to see you here soon. Um, and I hope that this message challenges your hearts and minds and, uh, and you really prayerfully consider um, your ministry here with us at Hidden Makers. We'll see you soon.